So uh, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Mental health and depression. All right. So I started my year off very interesting. I invited some friends over for dinner, but they started talking about the times they tried to commit suicide. My first friend showed me his rope marks around his neck and told me it was his second time to try to kill himself. My next friend took 30 Rubotril tabs, these are some sleeping pills, to celebrate her 30th birthday and downed it with alcohol. My next friend I shot a commercial with, she was 21 years old, had slash marks all over her arm. So I asked her what that was. She said, she said, it's a tattoo. I said, no, not that, that, pointing to the slash marks around her wrist. And she said, oh, these, these were the times I tried to kill myself. I advocate about mental health because mental health is close to my heart and because I am one of them. Two years ago, I was diagnosed as clinically depressed. These were the times I felt alive but dead inside. I woke up every day feeling and thinking myself, why was I still even here? I alienated myself from my friends and I only thought bad thoughts. I didn't have energy anymore and I just wasn't myself anymore. Time went by so quick and yet I did nothing. I wasn't productive at all. And I'd rather be dead. So, what is depression? Depression is a sickness of intense feeling of sadness, and it can happen to anyone. And it lasts for more than two weeks, and that keeps you from functioning properly. Your, the, the quality of your life decreases, and it affects your family, your relationship, your work, and just life in general. Symptoms. If you have more than five of these, or five of these or more, then you may have clinical depression. Loss of energy. You, you probably used to be the life of the party before, but now you try to avoid social situations. You're just not yourself anymore, and you're feeling kind of weird and awkward. Feelings of worthlessness and guilt. You feel you're not pretty enough, you're not smart enough, you're not... You're just not enough. You talk to someone and you think, what is she thinking of me? Oh, she thinks I'm stupid. These things. And you feel slowed down. Did you guys know that emotions have weight? Okay, so everyone, close your eyes. Okay, good. Imagine a sad memory. Imagine a sad instance. Now imagine a happy moment, probably when you won or when you made your family proud. Did you notice, okay, I'll open your eyes. <laughs> Thank you. Did you notice your body? When you thought of a sad thought, you're heavy, you slouch. But when you think of a happy thought, you lift up. So emotions have weight. And when you feel depressed, you're heavy all throughout and it lasts for more than two weeks. So think of happy thoughts. You move faster, quicker, smarter. Indecisiveness. You don't know. It's hard for you to make simple decisions. For example, you want the matcha ice cream or the chocolate ice cream. And then you get the matcha ice cream, but no, I want the chocolate ice cream. No, 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 I want the matcha ice cream. Simple things like this. You can't make easy decisions. Sleep disorders. Either you get too much sleep or you lack sleep. In my case, I got enough sleep, but I felt that I didn't sleep at all. Loss of interest in activities. I, I love music, but when I'm on my depressed state, I skip from song to song, and it's difficult. You, you lose interest in everything. You, you don't want to talk to anyone or your friends or even listen to music. Your interests are 
not interesting to you anymore. Significant weight loss or weight gain. Now, some people cope with depression in different ways. Some eat. Some cope through it by eating. Some don't eat at all, and some eat a lot. I wish I was the type who didn't eat at all, but unfortunately, I eat. I'm a stress eater. So significant weight loss or gain. And lastly, but the most important, thoughts of suicide or attempts of suicide. So, what did I do? Or rather, what to do, if you have it? First, and always, is to seek professional help from a psychiatrist or a psychologist. These are trained professionals and try to listen and follow, no, listen and follow to their advice. And it's always best to supplement it by talking to people, especially to someone who understands what you're going through. Talk to your friends, your loved ones, and believe me, it will help, it will lighten your burden. But if you talk to people, not everyone will understand you, and that's normal, and that's okay. Because there are several misconceptions about depression. It's equating depression to sadness. I'm feeling depressed, depressed, but they talk, they're talking about sadness. So it's feeling sad, or they think it's not a real illness, or it's just all in your head. They just want you to snap out of it. So again, depression is not sadness. It is not clinical depression. Sadness is an emotion. It's fleeting and it's temporary. It doesn't last forever. You can't trust your emotions at times, and especially when you're feeling depressed. I advise you not to make big life decisions at this point in time. Sadness is an emotion, and you, you can't trust it. They're wild horses. So girls, it's always hand over heart. <laughs> However, depression is intense feelings of negative, of sadness and negative energy that lasts on for more than two weeks. And it's not just easy to snap out of it. So, what did I do? Or rather, what did they put, or, what, or rather, what did they try to put me on? When I was depressed, and when they told me that I was depressed, at first I was in denial. Was I really depressed? I want you to know that denial may be a symptom of depression. So, when I found out, they put me on medication. I tried, they put me on antidepressants. I tried taking it, but I didn't like it. It wasn't for me. And I knew deep down in my heart that that wasn't right. I was feeling numb, and I wasn't feeling anything at all. I felt like a vegetable, and this wasn't just right. So my dad was diagnosed as bipolar, and he has been under medications for the past 10 years, and he has been dependent on it. But you know how drugs are. It's a double-edged sword. You take it now, but it has its side effects. You take it now, but you live shorter or later. And I wanted, I wanted him out of it. So I wanted to prove to him and to others that I could get out of my depression naturally. So, how did I do it? I got over it. Obviously, I'm here, still alive. There are two ways of medication. There's Western and there's Eastern. For Western, they put you on antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and sleeping pills. You go to a psychiatrist, and the first thing they do is prescribe you medicines. But you have to find the right combination for this, and it doesn't it doesn't take effect right away. You have to wait around two to three weeks for it to stabilize your mood. And you know how kids are, they want things quick. I 
could have had it in three weeks. I wanted to be happy now. And they classify, they give you all these drugs because to them, it's a hormonal imbalance. But on the Eastern side, they call it the bottling up of emotions. You're just not yourself anymore, or rather, you're not your true self. So there's the alternative medicine. So there are alternative ways to heal depression. There's homeopathy, acupuncture, meditations, affirmations, yoga, exercise, and diet, and I'll tell you more about it later. There is no one way of treatment, and the best combination is to take either one of them and to combine it with talk therapy. That's talking through it, opening up to someone, talking to your psychiatrist, or someone you really trust and someone who knows what you're going through. The best is to combine these two, and but please don't get me wrong, I'm not against medication. It's best to find the right mix. So, how did I get over it? I had to do a 180 on my lifestyle. I had to change physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. For physically, I had to exercise every day. I made sure to at least get 30 minutes of cardio. I jog, I ran, I practiced yoga, tried Pilates, cycling, I stayed active, I went to the gym every day. You know, inactivity is your enemy. So you always have to stay active. And after all, if you look good, you'll feel better. Mentally, I read a lot. I educated myself. If you read a lot, you add more value to yourself. And that's very important for someone who's depressed because you feel worthless. You, all, you, you always have these negative thoughts. I was also more grateful. I had a gratitude journal. I wrote 10, grateful, 10 things I was grateful for every day. And then each day you add more and more and more. And then eventually, and it has been scientifically proven, to treat depression. So become more grateful for things. And I had to have a better perspective about things and have a um, better attitude about things. Spiritually, I prayed more. I connected to myself more. And this is where meditation comes in. They say that when you pray, you talk to God. And when you meditate, God talks to you. Emotionally, I had to be honest with myself. You know, it's okay to be bad sometimes. It's okay to, uh, to admit to yourself that you didn't do the right thing. You really have to be honest to yourself. You have, you cannot lie to yourself. To admit to yourself those feelings and then you can overcome it. And emotionally, I had to stay away from the people who were bad for me. Deep down in your heart, you know who are good for you and who are bad for you. I always say that three good friends are enough. It's the quality of your friendship that matters, not the quantity. Also, I tried... Also, I tried... Also, I had... Okay. Another thing that helped me out of depression was this. It's called the wheel of life. So there's your friends, your family, your love, your spiritual use, school, work, financial, and health. Financial, it's proven that it causes depression. So how are you faring in these areas of your life? Are you focusing mostly on your love life? Are you giving, how are you spending your time or energy? Are you focus more on your social life? Is your health depreciating? Are you not in touch with your family anymore? What about you? Are you forgetting yourself? Do you have time for yourself? So more or less, you have to be in balance. And what really matters to you? To me, this quote was able to help me out of depression. It says, beauty isn't about having a pretty face. It's about having a pretty mind, a pretty heart, and most importantly, a beautiful soul. So I try to classify things that matter to me in three things. Having a pretty mind. Were you able to have a good conversation? Were you smart? Were you intelligent? A 
pretty heart? Were you kind to people? Were you being kind? Did you have a good personality? And a pretty soul. Were you connected? Um, it, and it's not just about the physical looks. What also helped me is that I had a good support system. I was very fortunate that I had a dad who was going through depression and he knew how I felt. So it was easy for me to talk to, it, to, talk to him. So then again, it's good that you have friends and family who only make you feel good. If they don't make you feel good, then you don't need that kind of negative energy in your life. So here are some good mental health habits and here are some bad mental health habits that could trigger depression. There's lack of sleep, which is number one. There's drugs and alcohol. So kids don't take drugs. <laughs> Diet, negative thoughts, and the number one cause of depression is stress. And for good mental health habits are positive social connections. I repeat, positive, not just any so social connections. If you're invited out to a party, if, do you think that's going to be a positive social connection? Or are you just afraid of missing out, the fear of missing out? New learnings. If you try new things, you know, it activates a new part of your brain and it makes you feel excited again, makes you feel alive. Having a great diet, foods rich in protein and medicines like B-complex, B-complex, that triggers the neuroscience in the brain. Getting enough sleep, eight hours of sleep, exercise, move every day, and gratitude. So finally, after six months of agony, darkness, and suffering, and feeling worthless, feeling worthless, I was a better person, stronger, better, smarter. I knew what happiness was because I knew what sadness was. I was out of my depression free, and I did it naturally without any drugs. So there are three things I want people to take out when I do for my talks. One is for people to be informed about depression, its consequences including suicide, prevention, and treatment. Two, that people with depression are able to seek help. And three, that friends and family are able to provide support. So what to do if you have a friend, family, or colleague who is going through depression? Here are some things to say. You say, I'm here for you, or you're not alone, or let's talk. You are important, I love you, you can survive this, and depression is real. You don't say, stop feeling sorry for yourself, or just snap out of it, or there's always someone worse off than you are, or it's your fault. Lastly, I want you to know that there is that if you've been feeling down, lost, or if you've been wanting, or if you've been having thoughts of suicide, I want you to know that depression is real, and I want you to know that there is hope. I went through these very things, and I know how you feel, and that I've been there. From seeking proper help, getting proper treatment, and putting all my efforts in, I now stand here before you, and it wasn't easy, but I now stand here before you as Miss International 2016. Thank you so much.